Absolutely astounding crossing at a cul-de-sac. We are at Main Crossing South watching the next set of massing wildebeest gathering at the water's edge. A couple of zebras mixed in there as well. And another fantastic deep crossing. There go the first of them. And usually when one is brave enough to go, the rest will follow. And as you can see already, the crocodiles are moving in. You can see them being carried by the current. It's particularly strong here, pushing up against it. Already two massive leviathans on their way towards the poor wildebeest. And if, it's deep, if it's shallow enough, if they can get their footing, they can actually jump over them and push past and away from the crocodiles. Oh, Zebra, you've taken an interesting path. I've just been watching what Steph's been narrating over. Oh, there goes a crocodile for one of the zebra. They're going straight into its path. They don't actually have a choice here. And the crocodiles just seem to bide their time. And at least with... Oh, look, there's a crocodile that's got a wildebeest over there, just behind the zebra. Oh, come on, fight back. It's been carried along by the current. There's absolutely nothing it can do. And as you can see, hundreds of them, hundreds and thousands of them still massing down the banks. And the total number of deaths, oh, this wildebeest is struggling so hard. It's got three crocodiles around it. Come on, buddy. Oh, I think that's the end. His feet are off the ground. There's no way it's going to be able to fight back. I think we're going to let this wildebeest wash away down the current with the crocodiles. Karen, you say that it is such an action-packed morning. Oh, look at these wildebeests. Hold on a second. Let's just go back to this wildebeest. It's actually getting to the crossing. It's getting to the rocks over there, the shallow rocks. If it can find some footing, it can actually push itself up. Karen, it has been an incredibly action-packed morning. And, of course, we're now in the height of the migration. Come on. Come on. Come on, get your feet on. You can see it's still kicking. Push. Oh, no, it's on its back. It's not going to get out. Or is it? Or is it? Or is it? Come on, come on. Come on, Vildi. You can do it. All watched by the impassive hippos. I wonder what they must think of all of this drama. Come on. There's a rock. There's a rock. Go, go, go. Go, you can get out that way. It's obviously still got a crocodile attached to one of its legs, but it's on off. It's got all legs down. Come on, push, push. Here you go. Oh, this is unbelievable. One wildebeest story out of a couple of thousand coming into this river, and it's trying and it's fighting so hard. But that crocodile's got got it right on the shoulder joint, just below the shoulder joint. I don't know how it's going to break free of that grip. The crushing pressure of a crocodile's jaws. If it does, I imagine its leg is going to be severely damaged. Oh no, oh dear, it's lost purchase on the side and it's now washing down with the current. Just one individual struggle. It's crazy. Oh, come on. I don't think it gets any shallower further down here. Not for a long while. Jess, you say keep fighting. Absolutely. These poor animals. Oh, no, little one. Little one's been washed by the current. Here come the rest of the wildebeest crossing. Let's just go wider for a bit. Oh, hold on. Hold on. I think our wildebeest just made a break for it. Come on, come on. Go, go, go. He's on the side, but I don't know how he's going to break free of that grip. Come on, wildebeest. You've got a couple of hundred thousand people rooting for you around the world. Do it. You can do it. Oh, look at the little ones being washed by the current, as if it's not enough that they have to contend with numbers, sheer numbers of crushing wildebeest and the crocodiles and dodge the hippopotamus, and now they have to fight off the current as well. There you go. Well done, little one. This little one's made it. Imagine what this experience must be like for them. This is the first time for them. And Dee, you say this is unbelievable, and I'm sorry, Dee, I can't stop myself. I have to go and check. What's happening to this poor wildebeest? It's been fighting. It's losing strength. Still close to the shallows, but just not close enough. Come on. Oh, one last desperate push. Oh, dear. And I think that might have just been the final moments. 
Now it's on its back again. Dear, it is incredible. It's astounding that instinct drives these poor animals into an, what seems like an almost suicidal mission. And if you're in the front, you run the risk of being crushed by other wildebeest at the back. I don't really want to watch this poor wildebeest drown. Here they all go. Much easier to get up the side here than it was at cul-de-sac crossing. You can see they're galloping up. They're not all getting crushed up against the side of the bank. We'll come back to our poor Vildi. I just want to see what the rest of the crossing looks like. Look at this. Look at the sheer numbers of these animals. Stuart, you say this is nature at its most amazing. It is. It's also nature at its most brutal. It seems so pointless to watch the poor wildebeest drown and the crocodiles still going for the living ones. Yes, run, run, joyful wildebeest. But it is nature at its most real. And all of this plays a part in this ecosystem. Crocodiles being fed. Lots of mouths to feed. Where's our wildebeest gone? Oh, there it is. It's now in the middle of the river. Come on. Still got that crocodile attached. This wildebeest, imagine the energy that it's exhausted itself spending. Look at it going. Oh. Lisa, I don't think it would survive its injuries if it got away, but you never know. Animals are resilient. And that, I'm afraid, is the last we'll see of that wildebeest. We will never know how that saga ends. I would suggest it's not going to end favorably for the wildebeest. Animals are resilient. You never know. I've seen many an animal survive a broken leg, so it's possible. But it must be absolutely exhausted. It's breathing in water. Oh, just casually stop for a drink there, Zebra. That seems like a sensible decision. Yeah, yeah, that's what I'd do if I were you. Well done. Seems like an odd place to stop, but what do I know? Maybe all the crocodiles... Oh, look at this. They panicked. The rest of them have actually turned away from... There's a lioness. There's a lioness there on the right. Look at the wildebeest falling, crashing into the water behind her. And she's racing off after them. Oh, my goodness. There is just utter chaos there. She's going to get it. She's got that little baby straight in, taken down. The sheer panic of the situation. The wildebeest don't have anywhere safe to go. And there she's got a little baby wildebeest. Unbelievable. This is just a sheer free for all. Poor little baby Vildi is still struggling. Hopefully it will be a quick death. She's a big lioness and that's a small Vildi calf. And that will feed the paradise pride, or at least will feed her for the next day or so. It is utter chaos. And that's why I kept moving backwards and forwards, because we know that these lions stalk along the edges. Leopards also do as well. I mean, that's not something we've seen yet on a crossing camera. And there we go. The end of the poor little Vildi. Oh, sorry, little one. Relatively quick. Certainly a lot quicker than if it was a crocodile. You can see she's panting. She came pelting out of the croton thickets down along the rocks. Remember, all of this is happening live at the main north and south crossing in the Masai Mara. Michelle, if I had to guess who this lioness is, I'd say she's one of the members of the Paradise Pride. They go by a couple of different names out here, but we'll go with the Paradise Pride for now. What has she seen? What is she looking at? She's just watching the rest of the crossing in wonder. So I would guess, I mean, the Paradise Pride, as far as I know, is quite a large pride. I haven't spent that much time with them. And there's a degree of, not confusion, but there's a lot of different lodges and, and guides that use different names for the lines that we see. Well done, girl. And she's left it. This is such a free-for-all out here. Beth, you want to know how we keep our emotions in check and yet understand that this is part of nature. I wouldn't say that we do keep our emotions in check. I think we feel, I, I, I don't think we feel each and every single death as an individual, but the sheer scale of it, I know I can only speak for myself personally, the sheer scale of it, I, I struggle to actually understand at times. I know rationally, I know intellectually why the animals have to do this in the way that they do, but it just seems so utterly wasteful at times. These poor, silly animals driven by instinct. Oh, where are you going, camera? Stay there.
Thank you. Here's our lioness. She's hot. She needed a rest. And Jess, you say, why would she need that kill? She, well, I mean, you've got to make hay while the sun shines, quite literally. And perhaps we need a sort of a Maasai Mara equivalent of that expression. Oh, camera, don't freeze there. Sorry about that little glitch. We need a Mara kill wildebeest while the migration happens kind of expression. She doesn't need it, but there's food aplenty and her instinct tells her to make the most of it. She's going to have a quick rest. She's exhausted. She did come tumbling out of these rocks. How she kept her footing, I do not know. Let's just have a quick look around what's going on. Look at that. The river's empty. Now, Deb, you say, why has she abandoned the kill? She hasn't. She hasn't abandoned the kill. She's hot. She's tired. She's just expended a huge amount of energy catching that baby wildebeest. Not as much as a, a long, drawn-out hunt, but she has expended energy, and it is very hot today. So she hasn't necessarily abandoned it. She's resting. And one thing we've noticed with the lionesses or with the lions, when they kill during the migration, they'll kill one, two, three, more than three wildebeest at a time. They'll eat one a bit later when they're hungry. Nothing goes to waste out here. I guess that's how we have to remember how to keep our emotions in check. And this has certainly been an emotional crossing. I think that is that for now. Our zebra and wildebeest that are on the edge of the, of the river, I don't think they're going to cross. So we're going to say farewell to you all for now. Thank you for joining us, and we'll keep an eye on the river crossing cameras.